B. T minus five seconds. September 25th, 1967. A Thorogena rocket carrying a Corona satellite takes to the skies from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. Corona is an amazing program for its day. Launching something into space, period, was a brand new concept. It was a real game changer. Because now it allowed American spy satellites to traverse airspace undetected and take very high resolution photographs of anything they wanted to. Two years into its mission, as the spy bird scans Western Poland, it captures this image. Among this really heavily wooded forest are concrete structures. This looks like a whole complex, almost like a mini city here. The fact that a spy satellite was designated to, to photograph this means it ain't no Girl Scout camp. We're probably looking at something that was of significant national security interest to the United States military. Yet declassified CIA documents revealed the massive structures baffled their top analysts. Investigators turn to recent satellite images. It just deepens the mystery as far as I'm concerned. In one era, these structures are visible to satellites. And in another, the forest has reclaimed them and overgrown them. What is under these trees? Why did somebody build something so big and then just abandon it for decades? Intrigued by what could lie in the forest, Polish archaeologist Gregor Kiaszwiz is traveling to the site in the satellite images. Something could be concealed in the dense forest when it raises the question about why CIA was interested specifically in that place. To find out, I need to go there and see what features survived until the present day. During World War II, the Nazis build concentration camps in Poland's forests. After the war, this vast woodland falls under the dark shadow of Soviet communism. It looks like we are here. To locate up close what the CIA were looking at from space, Kiyoshviz is turning to the latest aerial technology. Maybe when we look from above, we'll see more. The drone uses laser pulses to scan the forest, effectively stripping away the canopy to create a LIDAR image of what lies beneath. And for the first time in decades, the mystery structure is mapped in detail. It tells me that there's lots of remains around in the uh, landscape. This is very interesting. Kiyoshviz heads towards the first of the features revealed in the LiDAR image. Moving north, an unusual feature in the forest floor catches the archaeologist's eye. This looks like a trench. The presence of a trench suggests that whatever was kept here needed protection from ground assault. And the LIDAR data reveals this was just one of many trenches surrounding the central structures. This shows that whatever was kept in the zone had to be secured for all the time. Yet when Kiyashviz gets closer to the central zone, the mystery of what took place here deepens. 
Oh Gott. The forest floor is littered with decaying personal possessions. Some belong to women and young children. As Kiashviz explores further, he finds chilling clues to what may have happened to them. The macabre collection sheds light on who the structures were built for and when. Look what they found. Um, that was a Soviet army uniform, and that's original bottom. This is a bag, and there is a date inside. It's 1982. All those artifacts are not only evidence of presence of Soviet soldiers, but also whole Russian families here. As Kiashviz pushes further into the forest, he spots one of the large structures that intrigued and mystified the CIA during the Cold War. Oh, God. It looks like there is a little opening on the side. Maybe we can get into it and explore. One of the larger rooms yields clues to what the Russians were doing here. And at the both sides of this room, there were very thick blast-proof doors. And there are some relics of a ventilation system. Whatever was kept here required very specific conditions. The temperature and the humidity had to be controlled for all the time. In a blast-proof chamber, the archaeologists spot some artifacts on the floor. Okay, so those are seals. As an expert of the Cold War, Kiashviz thinks he recognizes this type of seal. I'm pretty sure that those were used to seal uh, containers with nuclear warheads. Kiashviz's aerial data has uncovered a secret facility capable of securing a massive stockpile of the most devastating weapons known to mankind. But something about the size and shape of the missiles kept here is unusual. The storage rooms are actually quite small, which uh, tells me that uh, they could be used only for storage of tactical nuclear warheads. Tactical nuclear weapons can unleash a destructive force 20 times more powerful than the bomb that destroyed Hiroshima. But what's even more terrifying is how they're used. The Cold War is well known for the threat of the use of nuclear weapons. The tactical nuclear weapon would be used in the presence of your own troops on a battlefield. The use of tactical nuclear weapons on a battlefield is almost unimaginable. With the push of a button, commanders devastate key targets. Before deploying thousands of troops to fight it out on an apocalyptic radioactive landscape. Imagine the reality of combat where everyone is from head to toe in their nuclear protective suits using machine guns and they're lobbing tactical nuclear weapons at one another all the while. Recovered Cold War files reveal that in the late 1960s, the Kremlin secretly moves dozens of nuclear missiles to the site in the image. Just a few hundred miles from the Soviet-controlled border with Western Europe. 
They disguise the missile bunkers and surround the compound with barracks housing young families. The Soviet Union wasn't stupid. They knew that we were watching. The Soviets work hard to make this look like just an ordinary military base, concealing the fact that there are tactical nuclear weapons stored all over the place. It was well hidden in the woods, and it was well kept from the people who lived nearby. From here, it seems, the communists intended to wage nuclear war, the war to end all wars. Yet Kiashviz's investigation reveals that this is just one element of the Soviet subterfuge. This was a true Armageddon bunker. Just proof that there was nuclear weapon kept within the territories of Poland. And was proof that people lived once in the shade of nuclear holocaust. For over three decades, the secret site remains primed to unleash nuclear hell on European cities and American bases just over the border. They have no idea that in the woods there are all these nuclear weapons. And so their lives could change like that in one moment. Following the collapse of the Soviet Union, the Soviet soldiers and their families abandoned the site, leaving the area strewn with their belongings and equipment. Over the following years, the clandestine base is reclaimed by the forest, only to be revealed from the skies once more. The truth about this facility has only just emerged, and it makes me wonder, what else is out there?